Moving on now. Despite aggressive action from the Federal Reserve, inflation continues to weigh heavily on Americans and the U.S. labor market does remain strong, but it's concerned, uh, it's concerned many rather, that even these higher interest rates uh, may be on the horizon for quite some time, and inflation is going to stick around. Joining me now is Madison Ventures Plus Principal and University of San Diego School of Business Visiting Research Fellow Mitch Rochelle. Mitch, thank you so much for coming on. You know, we don't have February's numbers yet, even though it's March. So we will have to rely on, you know, the, the latest data from January. But I want to ask you, you know, we've sort of been in this posture from the Fed for a while. Inflation doesn't seem to be going anywhere, but we have these other indicators of resilience. So are you at all concerned that the Fed's soft landing is maybe not as uh, possible as we once thought it was? Uh, Jackie, I think uh, we never thought the soft landing was going to be possible. We all thought that the recession was right around the corner, but the recession hasn't started yet, and the economy still seems to chug along, notwithstanding, you know, last month or January's jobs report was more, more than a half a million jobs being created, which, you know, has every economist shaking their head, and, and, and the Fed, too. I think they're shaking their head. So I think they're going to continue to have to keep their you know, foot on the accelerator, raising interest rates, with the hope that they can slow down the economy without you know, a crash landing. Well, yeah, I mean, to, to that point, though, you know, these rate hikes are going to have to stick around. I mean, they might even increase, some are saying. So doesn't that you know, increase the chances that we end up in a, in a recession? Well, that is the goal, believe it or not. The goal of raising interest rates is to, you know, chill demand. Uh, it's actually more violent than that. It's called demand destruction, uh, but it hasn't worked yet. Uh, and what's happening, which, you know, keeps me up at night, is the fact that consumers, which drive the U.S. economy, not only do they continue to spend, but they continue to borrow money, loading up credit card debt, uh, loading up second mortgage debt at higher interest rates to spend which is confounding that you would think that that wouldn't happen. So um, I think we're going to continue down the cycle of higher interest rates. Uh, but when it ultimately turns, I think it's going to turn a little uglier than uh, we had all hoped, because I think it's going to be met with layoffs uh, and higher unemployment. When you look at the data that we have and the data that we're looking for from February, you know, what concerns you the most? What do you want to see in order to feel comfortable? The thing that still bothers me the most about all of this is the fact that the labor force, uh, and the fancy word is labor force participation rate, is still lower than it was back in February of 2020, which was three years ago. So we've lost people in the workforce, and we will get next week um, one of the reports that shows the number of open jobs out there. If I see the number of open jobs falling, and the labor force continuing to shrink, that's going to tell me that the recession may be closer. But if the number of jobs that are open stays the same or goes up, then I got to shake my head saying, I don't get it. Why are there all of these open jobs and people not filling them in a time where it's costing us all more money to go to the supermarket and so forth? Well, what do you think Americans have to, you know, maybe don't don't read the inflation data line by line, but certainly, you know, know the difference between paying double for your lunch than you used to, you know, a year ago uh, and not. What, what should they be paying attention to and how can they set themselves up for some hopefully success, but at least, you know, survival as we head into the, more of these likely rate hikes? You know, Jackie, easier said than done. My, you know, armchair advice is, you know, don't buy it if you can't afford to pay for it in the next 30 days. The problem is, as we you know look ahead to the summer, and we could have five dollar gallon you know prices of gasoline again. Uh, our electric bills are going to be sky high as we try to air condition our homes. So it's easier said than, said than done. But uh, you know Americans are just going to get more and more frustrated with uh, you know pinching pennies, which I, I don't know that there's any alternative because inflation is not going anywhere. You're, you're right about to point out that, you know, the winter presents one challenge, home heating, oil, and, you know, the costs surrounding that. And then the summer has a whole other set of challenges with, you know, air conditioning and electricity costs. All right, Mitch Rochelle, thank you very much for coming on. Appreciate your time. You bet, Jackie. See you soon. 
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.